Okay, welcome to part 3 of my tutorial, making a DFT code in one hour. And this is just a really quick, quick, quickly show you how the Eigen Solver is done. So, we are basically going to take our Helium, and we are going to copy it to Helium Eigen. And we are starting Oma, and we are sort of trying to improve the Eigen Solver, because we are sort of using the MATLAB's own it's okay, but it's sort of not reusing the wave functions, because we have a SCF loop here, the wave functions will be pretty close to the original wave functions Entered, entering the equation, so there's some better way to do this, so let's just uh, first isolate the Hamiltonian here and of course the Eigen the equation we are trying to solve is like this. This is the uh, Cohn-Sham DFT equation where H contains all the Hamiltonians, um, all the potentials and the kinetic energy. So let's just make this a residual. So um, now we have sort of an error estimate of this. So we have two vectors, the Psi and the RR, and let's just combine them into one vector, so we sort of concat two vectors, so this is like um, n g3 g cubed times 2 matrix and now we form sort of diagonalized Hamilton and it is subspace so what we do is that we calculate the expectation value of each matrix element with respect to these two uh, orbitals, so it's like 2 times 2 matrix and also the overlap and now we can diagonalize this in subspace. So this is really easy because these are only two by two matrices. And when it's done, we can do the hard part and sort of so-called subspace rotate these uh, wave functions. We multiply from right with this u, which is the eigenvectors, and this will ensure that our psi e is um, sort of now in diagonal form in this subspace, so we can go check it, so let's calculate the Hamiltonian matrix again and see if this works um, let's see, ah, oh, I like the old code here Okay, so let's have some sort of initial guess for the energy. Also, what wave function? So, just arbitrary initial guesses. Oops, I forgot this E. So this E stands for sort of eigen eigen solver, and we can see that the Hamilton matrix is now a diagonal. Okay, so this is working. So now we got two eigenvalues, so we're trying to just sort of, um, if we would have more, we would sort them, but let's just say that if we have, we pick the lowest one. So if the eigenvalue 1 is the most lowest one, we pick it. And if not, we pick the second, because this, it's uh, the problem is that this eigen doesn't return the eigenvalues in any sort of order, so we have to do this kind of hack here. Not pretty, but... Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Now we have done our subspace diagonalization, and this doesn't guarantee the norm, so we just normalize the Psi as, as the Eigen server does. So, let's see. So... We are converging, but you can see that we are converging very, very slowly. And there's a good reason for this. We are not using any kind of preconditioner. Uh, so our errors in this residual propagate very slowly because uh, this H affects only the neighboring points because of the stencil length one. So the error basically just propagates. So um, I want, might want to loop this a couple of times here.
And that's pretty much it. So, further optimization. I can supply initial guess for this hardware potential. And maybe loosen a bit about this um, tolerance here. So, let's just set some arbitrary. Let's just start with zero initial guess for this hard free potential. So now you can see we are sort of much faster converging to the right values. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, okay, this ends the part three of the our subspace diagonalization tutorial.